As we practice keeping the breath in mind, we bring three qualities to the practice. There's mindfulness, which is the ability to keep something in mind. In this case, you're remembering to stay with the breath. And you're also remembering the lessons you've learned from your past meditations. Things that worked, things that didn't work. So when a particular problem comes up, you have a fund of knowledge to draw on. That's the first quality. The second quality is alertness. Being on top of what's happening and not drifting off and paying attention to other things. You want to pay attention to what you're doing, and especially to paying attention to keep the mind with the breath. If the mind wanders off, you notice that, so you can bring it right back. And the third quality is ardency. This is when you try to do it well. And it's in this quality that your character comes into the meditation. It's not just technique that we're engaged in here. Just the kind of person you are comes into the question of how well you do this, and the energy you put into it, and the persistence, and the dedication, and the truthfulness, all of which are qualities that are called perfections. And these are things we develop not only in meditation, but also in daily life. In fact, the way we develop them in daily life will spill over into the meditation. If you tend to be lazy, the sort of person who gives up as soon as you meet with an obstacle in issues outside, that's the kind of person you'll be as you meditate. So it's in this way that you have to look at your whole life as part of the practice. Meditation is not simply something you stick into your life the way it already is. It asks that you look at the way you live your life and ask if you can make some changes in your attitudes, changes in your activities. And thinking in terms of the perfections is very helpful, because there's so many things we do in the world outside we want to get a reward. And then we start realizing that the rewards of the world are not really worth all that much. You have to look for other reasons, and if you realize, okay, you're developing your character, then it gives you a, a good reason to stick with the duties that you still have, because we live in this world and we all have duties. Part of being a human being is, means that you have things you've got to do, many of which you really don't want to do, but you've got to do them. And as the Buddha said, the things that you should do, but you don't want to do them, if you can talk yourself into doing them, that's a sign of wisdom. In other words, you, you don't simply force yourself to do the duties, you learn how to want to do them. And thinking in the terms of the perfections is helpful that way. You can think of it as an opportunity to develop your endurance, to develop, develop your truthfulness, your determination, your persistence all the Capricorn virtues. And also your goodwill. There are times when you have to do something because someone else needs your help. And here's a way of proving, do you really have goodwill for other people? So it's good to look at that list of perfections all the way from ge generosity, virtue, renunciation, discernment, persistence, endurance, truth, determination, goodwill, equanimity. These are all qualities that we can develop in daily life, in our duties, in our jobs, in our duties at home. What other, other, other duties we have living in the human society? And see them as an opportunity to develop something good inside yourself. Because the accomplishments in the world, as one of our chants says, the world is swept away. So many things that we do will get washed away at some point. And if you hope to find meaning in life by the mark you leave on the world, there's plenty of erasers out there. 
that can erase what we do. But if you think of it in terms of developing the qualities that then you will take with you, then the work of the world can become a part of the practice. And see it as an opportunity to develop your persistence and patience, endurance. And that way you have something solid. Because when we leave this life, it's the qualities of the mind that go with us. And so you want to make sure that your accompaniment there, your, your friends on the journey, are good qualities. And then as you develop them in daily life, then they'll spill over into your meditation. Because after all, there's a large element of endurance that comes into the meditation. We're here to comprehend suffering. And that means we have to learn how to sit with it. Not to push it away, not to run away from it, and not simply to endure it, but you have to have some endurance in order to look at it, in order to bring your discernment to it as well. So if you're good at talking yourself into doing an unpleasant duty, you can talk yourself into being willing to sit and look at your suffering, to try to comprehend it, because that's the duty. These outside duties help with the, the duties of the Four Noble Truths. The perfection of renunciation, when you learn to give up certain pleasures for more solid pleasures, more solid forms of well-being, is going to be really helpful in, in that duty of abandoning the cause for suffering. Because all too often we go for things, we crave things, well, it's things we like. And if you're going to abandon them, you have to have some experience with saying no to some of your pleasures outside. So that the practice of the perfections helps with these duties of the Four Noble Truths, particularly with the developing. A right effort, part of the path, requires that you make your intent firm and that you keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Sometimes the effort is going to be a light effort, sometimes it's going to be heavy. But if you can make yourself willing and to be up for the effort, whatever is required, then that character trait is going to help carry you through the path. So the perfections are not simply sops for people who don't meditate. They're a necessary part of your meditation. As you learn to develop in daily life the qualities you're going to need as you're going to sit here. Try to bring the mind to concentration, then try to use that concentration so you can understand what's going on in the mind, why it's creating unnecessary suffering for itself, even though it wants well-being, 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 and what it does, it creates more suffering, suffering, suffering. Why is that? Where is the ignorance? How can we get past that? It's not just a trick of perception, and it's not just a technique that's going to help you do that. The qualities of the character that are going to be required. In this way, whatever duties you have, they do become part of the practice. And by carrying out your daily duties, you're carrying out the, preparing yourself to carry out the duties of the Four Noble Truths. So think of the perfections as treasures that you can develop. The work of the world is out there. That's a lot of work that needs to be done. Nobody's doing it. Here's your chance to do something positive and to gain in the process. Other people may recognize it and may not recognize what you've done. That's not the issue. You know that you develop something good in your mind, something solid. In this way, you can see that what seems like drudgery outside is actually an opportunity. And when you view it in that way, you benefit and the world outside benefits as well.